And we're doing more Robbie Gordon stuff. Welcome back to the show. I've still got the calculator up. 174 points separate me from second. If we didn't have a chase, there wouldn't be any even worry about winning this championship. I'm actually pulling off a Matt Kenza-style season right now, except unlike Matt, where he just top five and top ten to everybody to death, we're winning. <laughs> We've got 14 wins, 15 races. I'm sorry this game's actually easier than I thought, but it's on champion difficulty. I can't do anything about that. So, you know, Matt, second in points. Uh, not too much movement overall in the chase grid. Most of the, you know, top five are probably set for the chase, even though, you know, there's still about ten races left. Uh, in the regular season, Greg Biffle didn't have a good showing at uh, at Michigan, but Travis Pastrana had an awesome race up to ninth, and so did Carl Edwards. So we actually got a lot of Roush cars up here now, three Roush cars, in fact. And last time out, I absolutely destroyed David Reagan out of frustration and almost destroyed myself, but I didn't, and that's all that matters, and he is now 29th in points with probably no chance at a wild card spot, let's just be honest. He'd have to pull some shiracles to get that job done. And last car, Joe Nemechek, still the worst man in the cup field, but uh, Travis Quapel's still going after him, and Josh Wise starting to fall back into that as well. Okay, so next race is Sonoma. Fair warning to everybody right now, this race is going to be a total wash in our favor. It's going to be like Martinsville, okay? It's, it's actually hard to lose at Sonoma. And kind of the biggest problem is there's not going to be that much lap traffic, so this is probably going to turn into a podcast. The only problem is I'm going to struggle with what to say. I'm going to have to Kaiser so say everything. Before you begin qualifying, let's be sure the car is set up how you want it. Now head out and run a few laps. I'm comfortable, just like Michigan, with the default setups. I don't think you need anything else. The AI suck too bad here to even necessitate changing the setup. Probably not going to qualify on the pole, though. So it's going to be a lot like Martinsville and Dover, where I'm just not, I'm not pole capable, but I'm absolutely race win capable. Okay, buddy. A good qualifying session can make your life much easier come race day. Give it your best shot. All right, so this is uh, also the short course of Sonoma, which is my, my personal favorite layout, uh, and I'm going to give a SMI a lot of credit. Normally, stuff in NASCAR, you know, if something gets changed to something stupid, they're never really willing to go back and realize that their decision was a dumb one. But SMI was able to actually get enough brain cells gathered into one area to decide that the carousel layout didn't work and go back to the short course. So thank God for that. They put on a great race. That long course, even though the carousel's famous, I don't give a crap, it doesn't run good. Short course where it's at, gotta keep it on the track. And I forgot to mention uh, in this game, I think I actually talked about it many, many episodes ago, but uh, track limits are a thing in this game, which is really kind of weird. Time penalties for running wide off curbs and stuff like that, a lot like the the strict stewards in Formula One. Like, if you, if you were to... Uh, run wide off of the carousel at Watkins Glen in this game, for instance, like every stock car driver ever has done since they paved that runoff, uh, you'd actually get a time penalty in this okay, game. So it's really, really weird and against any sense of like stock car road course racing where like the name of the game is how much can you cut the track and make up time, to be honest with you, since we don't have, you know, outright track limits. The only like track limits you'll see in, in NASCAR are like don't totally skip the chicane. You know what I mean? You can't skip out on parts of the track, but like if you run wide, there's never been rules about, you know, like like this right here. I can hop all the way over that curb. Nobody gives a crap because well we like to we like to go exploring. We like to break those boundaries. And honestly, it just makes for more opportunities to, you know, put your car in different places, set people up for passes. That's what I love about, you know, NASCAR road course racing is it's just so different from any other discipline that tries to do road courses. And that's mainly because it's not predominantly a, a road course racing series, which is why the mentality is so different. Only issue is the lack of local local cautions. And while rambling that whole lap, I'm pretty much done with my qualifying lap, which Marcos put up a freaking flyer for pole. So let's see what this lap's capable of. Not pole. Great lap, seventh. Man. Top ten, just like we talked about. Big picture today. That's right, big picture. I don't give a crap about poles. Give me wins. Top 10 grid position. Good, strong qualifying. How you like that, though? Marcos on pole. You can tell you're at a road course. Greg Biffle second. Kurt Busch, back when he was in kind of crap equipment, you know, especially that Phoenix racing run uh, that he had at Sonoma in 2012 was just epic. So, you know, overall, top 10 makes sense. Martin Truex was uh, the actual winner of the 2013 uh, Toyota Save Mart 350. Travis is doing not very good 
He's down 29th, but so is Matt Kenseth. He's 26th. That's maybe a good opportunity for points. Yeah, David Reagan qualifies down 36. This ain't going to be a good point day for him either, is it? And dead last, Joe Nemechek aggressively going after that last car thing. Four seconds off the pace. That is amazing. Eric Amarola also doing that 43, uh, some embarrassment. If you have any doubts about how the car is set up, go out there and have some fun today. Welcome to one of America's most challenging road courses. Mike Joy and Daryl Waltrip with you at Sonoma for the Toyota Save Mark 350. Mike, a little bit different racing today. You know, we're going to go left and right here. You got to still see uh, the foot cam. You're going to see some healing and towing. You got to be a road course specialist to do well on this track. A lot of elevation change here, Daryl, and those long looping S's. Yeah, elevation, that'd be up and down, right? Well, this is going to be an up and down day for some of these guys. Conserve the brakes, don't over rev the engine, take it easy on that transmission, and most importantly, stay on the pavement, both left and right sides. Wonder if DW is available for the boogity this time. He wasn't at Michigan, I don't know what happened. Radio must not have been working. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let her rip, boys and girls. Yeah, he's here. Oh, ho, ho. just slipping up the outside. Tony, got to give me the racetrack. Oh, yeah. Got to play it smooth, and Tony just shoved Carl Edwards right off the track. Man, he got to yeah, keep it together. Funny I say that, then just almost wipe myself out. All right. Ooh. Inside. I saw a hole. I went for it. Oh, slide job, sort of. Not really. You got to be really careful with that corner. If you go actually beyond the curb, you will get a time penalty. Dirt tracking. I'll give you that inside. One lap, up to second. Marcos, be wary. Nice lap. That's the fastest one out there. All right, Marcos, I'm going to give you that one lap of satisfaction. Now give me the lane. Now give me the lane, buddy. I'm making the lane. All right. To the point, and Biff has taken over second. Now, I know that was probably kind of exciting. This race is about to get real boring real fast. Because <laughs> uh, I don't think the AIs are going to be able to keep up with us. Oh, sliding it out. There's a cone on the track. Oh, we got a fast lap going right here. More than one second better than my first lap. There it is. A 77.08. Oh, you don't want to hit that curb too much. It throws the car almost into the dirt. And that curb makes the car loose. Oh, yeah. Them rear tires are not going to be on this car at the end of the race. I don't really even care. Having fun with it. Make it good, you earn their money. Oop. Thought I was going to cut that. I keep it on the track. Don't want to go off there and Hosevar it. And another fastest lap. A 76.65. And as you can see, I've already got a five-second advantage. So, yeah, this, this race is going to be a wash. But, I mean, that's fitting. You take somehow God-tier Robbie Gordon, and you put him in his element. 
you're bound to find some great success with that combo. And not the not the kind with cheese in the middle. Oh man, that was a that was an unorthodox entry right there that to that S. And this lap I'm another one second faster. Great lap, yep. buddy. That one's in the book. A seventy five sixty. I'm in a constant state of yaw, the way I'm sliding this thing out. You know, I've talked about this before, though. Loose setups, when they're fast, that, that's the optimal setup. Like that right there. You know, you can be loose and just loose. That's when the car wants to turn faster than your hands can, but that's not this. Me and the car are in unison right now. There's a total agreement with what the car is doing and the inputs I'm giving it. That corner right there scares me every time because, like I said, if you go on to the left side of that outside curb, you can actually get a time penalty as much of, like, seven-tenths of a second. I thought I was going to do it on that one, too, in turn 10. It's hard to not lose your focus on what you're doing because there's, like, no opposition from the whole field at all. Nearest car is Greg Biffle 11 seconds back. And just, just look at how stupid the mini-map looks. I mean... We're on a two-mile road course, and I'm ahead by, like, an eighth of the racetrack. That should not be possible. Oh, slide that thing out. Whoa, game stutter. Shouldn't be doing that. Why is that going on? The encoding's not overloaded, so... I don't know if the game's melting or if it's the computer. Whoa, whoa. It's free. See, right? There, you gotta really work the rear end of the car as much as the front. I'm kind of dirt tracking it in the sense of a, I'm actually trying to slip the rears on purpose because it allows the car to pivot better. I know that's really, really unorthodox for a road course, but uh, it's actually making this car at least pick up lap time. Like that right there. You know what, since I've got nothing else to talk about, because i got a 16 second advantage, I'm going to take you through a lap around Sonoma, at least the way I drive it. Alright, so there's the start finish line. Doing great. Nice and steady. Second place is way back. Work that throttle just barely, get on the brakes, and right at that curb, get real hard on the brakes, downshift to second, and work the throttle up on exit. Stay in second gear all throughout this portion of the racetrack. Work the throttle and the brake to keep the car comfortably under control. Up to third, but then back down to second, and then first, actually. Take as much of that curb as you want. Don't hit that wall. Do not hit that wall. I take this corner entry wide, because I get a better exit th like that. And you saw I downshifted from second to first. Cut this. Clip that. Smack it down to second gear. Slide it coming off the corner. Miss that cone, it shouldn't be there. Clip this curb, brake back down to third gear, slide the car out, and then right at that white line, or yellow line rather, stomp on the brake pedal, downshift all the way from fourth to first. Allow the car to just roll through turn 11. Melt the rears on exit, and then power back to start finish line. That's how I lapse in all. It's probably not the right way to do it, but it's giving me a 20 second advantage. So. You can't deny that it's that it's working. So as you can tell, there were cars pitting. And I'm actually just going to split this race right in half. I'm just going to pit lap 11. And, uh, and that's it. I love cutting that part of the S's. The whole goal of S's is to make them as straight as possible. Uh, like the chicane at Indianapolis for the road course there. Okay, let's use that clean air. Keep digging. That road course, you really just want a straight shot at all the way up through that chicane as long as the curb doesn't explode. Man, I really just crapped up that whole segment of the racetrack. I think it's because I'm just like, I'm having a hard time focusing at this point because I, I got such an advantage. It's like hard to even pay attention when you got nothing pressuring you to focus. 
I knew I'd hit the wall on exit at least once. Because turn 11, I mean, it's such a game of chicken back to the gas because you, you want to get back like five times earlier than you actually should because of how just slow and, and tight that corner is. And I am pitting this lap, by the way, so we get to see how uh, committing the pit road works at this place as I have almost a 30-second advantage. Wonder if the AI strategy is going to be stupid here, too, to combine with me just kicking the crap out of everybody on pace. But if we can get, like, the AIs dumb enough to do a two-stopper, then we could just actually lap everybody on a road course. All right, so here we come. Pitting. You're doing great. Dice and steady. So oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to wreck it. I made it. Actually, car performance is 100%. I don't know how. I guess I didn't hit the wall hard enough. Felt pretty bad. Then again, why didn't it make a noise? Is is damage and noise directly like correlated in this game? Does does a wall impact have to make a loud clunking sound to count as damage? Let's see if anybody stays out. I'm I'm guessing a couple of them will. Okay, go get him, man. All right, nobody wreck. I'm merging. Jo <laughs> Joe Nemechek is who I pull up in front of. See, Joe, this this is how it feels. When you do it to me, this that's what it feels like. All right, so we're already passing, guys. Here we go, jumping up to the outside. Big send. Doran Jamie. Lighten up them rears. Come on. Oh, man, this thing's got a lot of body roll. Jimmy, keep it on the track. Ho, 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 putting it up the outside in turn 10. Michael, where are you going? McDowell was not on the racetrack at all. Oh, Scott Speed, jeez. Why is he so slow back to the gas? Well, look at Greg Biffle. Wow, stack up. Put a hand out the window, Jesus. Last time's clear. An awesome job today, buddy. I really, I really put Tony into the dirt there. Oh, keep it on the track, please. Oh, Marcos. Locking up right front tire. Oh, yeah, big dive. David Reagan. Should have figured he'd get me back. Didn't work, though. Oh, have I mentioned I'm up to third already? Whoa, somebody in the dirt. Travis. Not a rally course, bud. Oh, just give me that outside. I, I want... I just want to round these, these doofy. Come on. Up to second. And by the way, for elaboration, doofy is the plural version of doofus. Okay, so when you have more than one, it becomes doofy. Just figured I'd elaborate on that. Whoa! Whoa! Greg's pitting. Anyway, there's the lead. See you, Greg. Wouldn't want to be a... Oh, yeah, big dive on Bobby Labonte right there. Whoa. <laughs> well, we doored. Ooh, slide. Sparks coming out of the car. Smoke coming out the rear end. Whatever you're doing, you just keep doing it. And even knowing we're beating the crap out of this whole field, this car, like, for the fan experience, would look awesome. Because, you know, it's sparking going up the hills. It's smoking coming off the exits. David? Matt Kenseth, we tried to kill each other at Michigan. We wrecked each other like five or six times this season. Doing him just for a little bit of fun. Just, just for a sign to let him know I'm there because he's now been put down a lap at Your Sonoma. Lap. Look at them rears. 
They're not hooking up, but they're going forward. Ooh, look, Montoya second. Super wide angle. Cut it back. Look at how good of a you know, straight shot you get on exit doing that. Oh, no. Nope. Not getting a time penalty. I think I also hit that cone. Six to go. Nice and smooth. You're way out front. Use that clean air. Yeah, I get so much deeper into the braking right zone. Trevor, you got to get into them braking zones, man. Like this. See that? You got to just, you got to get in there, man. That's a nice cut. Remember, the goal of you know stock car racing on road courses is how much can you cut the track and still still get away with it without anybody getting upset. Side that rear. Look at the gap to second. Oh my God! It's Greg Biffle almost 50 seconds back. I'd like to win by over one minute. All right, Jeff. Really slow, and so is your teammate. I don't know what's wrong with, like, everybody else's brake package, but it's total crap. I can get, like, ten car lengths deeper into these braking zones than the AI cars can. And just as a reminder, this is champion difficulty. I don't know why it's this easy, but, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd make it more difficult if that was possible. Somebody in the dirt, I don't know who that is. Oh boy, it was Joe Nemechek. Oh man. I don't know how I made that corner. Well, I actually kind of didn't. I'm just lucky that everybody like knew I was missing it. And, and worked with me as to not start a wreck. I'm putting the nose up in there, Carl. You give me the space to do it, it's going up in. You know, it's funny. <laughs> There's a 2022 DLC update that's going to come out for NASCAR Heat 5. Okay, a three-year-old NASCAR game. At this point, I'd actually rather have a 2022 DLC come out for this freaking game. Where are you going? <laughs> David Stremme. Oh, man, it's like Texas, where he just shows up out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. Got to use that wall to straighten out the rear end. Newman? Give me the lane, give me the lane Newman. Ready to go. Oh, that thing is loose. Get me in there. Last side's clear. Oh, I, oh, I missed that corner. I missed that okay, corner inside. all the way. Oh, man. Never mind that one minute advantage. Screw that. Just don't wreck. Oh, the plus of having 55 seconds on second place. What I did was I actually uh, grabbed second too early. So what happened was I, I snapped the rear end out. See, it w I mean, it wouldn't be a race with me in it unless I screwed up. Okay, I got my screw up in. Didn't get a caution which is, you know, hallelujah, but I still screwed up. Biffle just now got to the part of the track where I screwed up to where you could take advantage of the time loss. That's how big of an advantage I got, that he, like, just made it to the S's. Car inside at your door. Oh, <laughs> just taking the rally layout. Don't worry about it. And I got past David Stremme again. Going to get him in uh, turn 11. Okay, coming off turn 11, and we're going to see the white flag. Come on, pick your lane, buddy. This is it. Look at how much I charge that braking zone. My God. That's why I've got a 50-second advantage. It's just nobody's getting in there. You know what I mean? you got to get in there. Oh, 
he's running into the dirt too. Nobody can keep it on course. Dale, you gotta get into that braking zone, man. Get in there. All right, you can tell I'm bored when I'm just screwing with lap traffic. Anyway, we're coming off turn 11. 55 second lead, pretty much. And that's win 15. Probably the easiest win I've ever gotten. Maybe second to Martinsville. That's what it's all about right there. We'll see you in victory lane, man. Like I said, when you got God tier Robbie Gordon, and you come to a track that Robbie was already capable of winning at, it's a match made in heaven, and uh, it equals a 53-second lead. At least 53 seconds. Might have been more than that, you know, by the end. Oh, yeah, I like them rears up. I was doing it all race. Okay, so this place is going to be a weird backwards victory lap. I want to hit one of these. I didn't get the chance to hit one of them in the race, so I wanted to do it now. Light them rears. Oh, yeah. And I've done it. Backwards victory lap at a road course. Right, now let's hit, let's hit this as hard as possible. There we go. Only took one at this place. Get them tires. Get them tires. Let's get another set. Let's start a tire fire here at Sonoma. Now that was a demonstration of a road course master class from the master of road courses himself, Robbie Gordon. He's going to drink an excess amount of wine tonight. Awesome performance. You really gave those fans a show today. I actually disagree with that. I don't think we gave him a show at all. Look at that. We were three seconds faster when it comes to lap time. Anyway, Greg Biffle got second. Uh, actually, pretty good showing for him. He dropped down in points from Michigan, so he kind of needed to get a good finish, you know, for these next couple races to get back up in the top five in points. So this, this was the run he needed. MTJ, the real winner of the 2013 race at Sonoma, up in third. Marcos up here. I don't know where Juan went. Juan fell all the way down to 15th. And uh, Dale Jr., 16th. I lapped all the way up to 16th position on a road course. And if I wouldn't have almost wrecked myself, I might have gotten all the way up to, like, 10th or something. Eric Almarola, 42nd. Man, he is not doing good at all this season. And then Nemco slow and dead last. So, Joe Nemechek, I think, is going to be possibly a lock for the last car championship. Because Travis Quapple's starting to get, like, top 40s. And Joe Nemechek is consistently, like, last or second to last. Look at that image of this race car. <laughs> the game's really screwing up now. It's on fire. No wheels except for one of them, which is far outside the car. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my master class of how to win a road course race by over 53 seconds while at least wrecking yourself once. Meanwhile, we have a 205 point advantage above Matt Kenseth in the championship standings. 15 wins, 16 races, two poles. Matt obviously lost quite a few points to us uh, because we were able to actually put him down a lap and make a pretty darn big statement at Sonoma. Uh, Martin Schwex Jr. is still third, and, you know, for the most part, the point standings haven't moved that much. Biffle, with his runner-up finish, he gained some points back. Uh, Dale Jr. actually lost a spot. Jeff Gordon got himself back up into the chase grid, and Travis dropped down to the last spot on the inside. Yeah, David Reagan ain't looking good for that wild card. He's down 33rd. The odds are getting much, much lower. And finally, we got Joe Nemechek, dead last in the championship still by a lot, by 22 points of Travis Quapple. And so anyway, that does it for today's edition of the Robbie Gordon Season Mode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Bit of a wash of a race as I, you know, predicted, but another win, 15 wins in 16 races. Uh, I'm only 12 wins away from Richard Petty's record, so I'm going after him. Meanwhile, that 43 car sucks all the way down 37th in points. We're beating the crap out of his own records. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I've got a Patreon set up as well. I've got a lot more, you know, Robbie Gordon stuff coming up and a bunch more stuff that, uh, you know, I obviously haven't made yet, but I've got the rumblings in the head right now to, to do a lot more different types of content, so stay tuned.